Hey everyone. Now after going through basically the, the study design uh, and the basic assumed data generating process as well as our estimation strategy for this specific study, uh, we're going to move on to actually implementing this design using the declare design package in R. Uh, and there are a couple of steps that kind of follow this MEDA outline uh, to kind of declare research uh, designs uh, that you've uh, read about in, in the um, Blair uh, 2019 uh, APSR paper. Uh, and the first step uh, in declare design is to ultimately set up uh, uh, the population uh, as well as random assignment uh, uh, and kind of the, the basic um, um, uh, data setup, okay? And uh, the way to do this uh, is uh, uh, as follows. And there are two steps that I'm gonna show uh, you here. Of course, we're first loading uh, tidyverse and declare design. Uh, and then there are two uh, parts that we add to this uh, design declaration. Uh, we're gonna uh, sh uh, basically save our design uh, in an object called design. Uh, and the first uh, command that we start with is declare underscore population. Uh, and there are a couple of basic features that we can set up here. Uh, we will um, uh, set the sample size to uh, 1500 as we talked about. Uh, and then we have basically one pre-treatment covariate, which is party identification. And we have one random assignment, which we're gonna declare in, in a second, okay? The first thing is to set the pre-treatment covariate as an ex exogenous factor. Um, we will... Um, set this as a, um, a three category variable uh, where we sample basically uh, with replacement um, with equal probabilities either minus one zero or plus one okay and we will ba we will later recode those as uh, republican uh, uh, democrat or independent party identification um, of course these are uh, uh, 1000 draws and again we're making kind of a simplifying assumption here that Republicans, Democrats, and um, um, and independents have equal sizes. About you know 30, 33 percent uh, of those fifteen hundred are in each of those groups. Of course, we could explore variations uh, or you know the effect of imbalance in that regard as well uh, by uh, kind of changing these parameters between design calculations. Um, another parameter that we're setting is the gamma parameter that I mentioned in the uh, when I when I kind of introduced the assumed data generating process. Note here that I'm just for illustrative purposes, I'm setting this gamma parameter as equal to one, just to be able to show you the result of each of those steps of the design declaration. Later on, we're going to run the same code, but then we're gonna, then we're going to um, basically specify varying levels of gamma in order to analyze our design for varying effect sizes of that treatment, okay? For now, we're just assuming it's one, uh, just in order to be able to show you each individual step and, and what is actually going on uh, uh, kind of under the hood as you declare, as you add layers, uh, layers to this uh, uh, design declaration, okay? Uh, so we're gonna leave it at that. Then we have our, um, um, error term epsilon, uh, which is just uh, 1,500 draws from a random normal distribution, uh, centered at zero, of course, uh, standard normal. Um, so, so this is declaring the population. Uh, uh, all the kind of exogenous uh, variables are, are basically uh, in there. Uh, and then the th uh, second uh, component is declaring uh, the random assignment, right? So these are the treatment conditions that we're assigning, okay? Um, we have uh, three different treatment conditions, um, uh, one control, one positive, and one negative. And importantly, we're taking into account that treatment assignment here is blocked by party identification. So this is something that was part of the design. Random assignment was not completely, uh, you know, fully randomized across all observations, but rather randomized within party identification blocks. Um, uh, so um, um, uh, to, to, to increase uh, uh, power essentially, okay? Uh, so after set of setting up uh, this uh, basic framework, we can then kind of look into this design object and, uh, and examine what uh, this object actually kind of looks like in one iteration, okay? And the way we can do that is uh, we can use the draw underscore data uh, command, which basically is just, a, it just allows you to 
kind of look at one draw from from that design with the specifications that you set up, what would one sample data set look like that is simulated based on that assumed data generating process, okay? So all we're doing here is we're taking that design, we're drawing one data set, which will be basically, you can think of it as one realization of that experiment, you know, 1500 observations uh, and uh, assume, given the specifications that we set up, uh, what would that data set uh, look like? Uh, and we're just printing this as a tibble and we see we have an ID for each observation uh, this is 1500 uh, observations. We have party identification which is minus one, zero or one as we spe uh, specified. We have our gamma which is just constant at one. We have our epsilon that's the error term uh, that we don't observe but that is part of our you know uh, underlying data generating process. We have our um, assignment variable which is called uh, z and then we have uh, another additional information for the conditional probability uh, of z, which is just equal uh, because we have uh, basically equal random assignment across blocks that are also equally uh, uh, um, uh, equally divided. So the probability for each treatment group is uh, just uh, uh, 0.33, okay? Um, <clears throat> so this is the first uh, step, declaring uh, the population and the random assignment, okay? Um, now, Let's see. Okay, uh, the next step uh, is kind of an intermediate step. We have to create some additional variables. Um, uh, specifically, uh, we have to kind of turn the uh, assignment variable and the party identification variables uh, into variables that uh, we actually want to work with as part of given our kind of estimation strategy, right? So um, the, if you look back in, in this uh, setup, our treatment assignment uh, ranges from one, two, and three, and our party identification is minus one, zero, and one. Of course, ultimately, we want dummy indicators, dichotomous indicators for treatment assignment and party identification, okay? So in order to do that, uh, we have an additional step, um, uh, which is uh, uh, you, where we use declare underscore step, uh, and we use the fabricate uh, function or fabricate, uh, it's part of the uh, fabricate uh, package, which um, allows us to kind of specify additional uh, recoded variables as part of the design declaration, okay? Uh, we have one indicator for bad as the negative uh, treatment, which is uh, uh, basically just a uh, dichotomous indicator uh, for uh, our treatment Z, the assignment variable being equal to one. Uh, we have good, uh, so the positive treatment uh, for three, uh, Z being equal to three. We have a Democrat indicator for PID being equal to minus one, and we have a Republican indicator for PID being equal to one, right? So now we have four dichotomous indicators for two partisanships where independents are the reference category, uh, and for the negative and the positive treatment where the control condition is the uh, reference category, okay? So if we now look at the same uh, data set, we again draw data and look at that tibble based on that design, Note here also, I should have mentioned this, uh, we take our old design um, uh, object that we specified previously and just add this declare step on top of that. Right? We're adding this as layers, similar to uh, in ggplot where, you, where we add layers to a, to a plot, right? You can think of this as a, as a similar kind of setup uh, to uh, specify these, uh, um, uh, these designs, okay? Um, so uh, we have the same data frame uh, well, different draws, of course. These are different random draws. The numbers here are, are, are different, uh, but the structure is the same. Uh, we just have additional variables, bad, good, dem, and Republican uh, for the respective kind of recodings of uh, our treatment assignment variable and our party identification variable, right? And you can go through here, uh, party identification um, uh, in being equal to one is equivalent of a Republican, minus one uh, is Democrat, and zero uh, is, uh, of course, uh, at the reference category, so both dem and rep is equal to zero, and the same for um, uh, the positive and negative treatment, okay? We have uh, one is equal to the uh, uh, negative treatment, three is equal to the positive treatment, two is equal to control, so uh, both positive and negative treatment indicator are equal to zero, okay? Um, all right. 
Um, after creating these additional variables, we can move to the next step, which mean, which is declaring potential outcomes, right? So this is now where our kind of data generating process that we assumed that uh, I presented in the previous video comes in. We're now basically declaring, uh, kind of assuming we, you know, the, the fundamental problem of causal inference didn't exist and we actually were able to, you know, compute all potential outcomes for each observation. And that's what we're doing here now, right? Um, we're declaring potential outcomes. Uh, y, that's our outcome variable. Uh, and this is just translating the da data generating process that I outlined in the previous video uh, into, uh, into R, right? We have a negative... Um, uh, 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 minus one times Democrats uh, or negative coefficient for Democrats, uh, positive for Republicans, uh, negative coefficient uh, uh, for the negative treatment, positive coefficient for the positive treatment of equal size. So this is symmetric. Uh, gamma is the coefficient that we're going to vary between 0 0.1 and 1 to look at different uh, sizes of this uh, kind of treatment uh, effect uh, relative to uh, the partisan differences, which is just for simplicity, being equal to minus one and plus one, right? That's the setup that we talked about before. We have this uh, motivated reasoning effect where the, the effect of the um, negative treatment cancels out for Republicans and the effect of the positive treatment cancels out for Democrats. And we have the ceiling effect for Democrats and for uh, Republicans for the positive and negative um, treatment respectively, okay? Um, in addition, we're specifying here uh, conditions, uh, which uh, basically just uh, tells um, R that the conditions for which we want to um, compute these uh, potential outcomes are good uh, being equal to zero and one and bad being equal to zero or one, right? So those are the potential outcomes that we want to, um, um, that we want to compute now, okay? After we've done this, we can uh, uh, again draw a, a data frame uh, based on that design uh, that now has our declared potential outcomes. We can again uh, look at this as a table and I'm just removing uh, some variables just to make it fit on the screen. Uh, essentially what we still have, what I'm, what I'm omitting is uh, some of these variables that we're not gonna use, the PID, uh, gamma, epsilon, Z, and Z conditional probability. All those we're not gonna use, we're gonna use the recoded variables that we have down here. So I'm just uh, plotting those. Um, and this is what, the, what this looks like. We have our ID, we have our indicators for uh, the positive and negative treatment condition. We have our pretreatment covariates for Democrats and Republican, and we have three um, uh, potential outcomes, one for uh, the uh, control condition where good and bad is equal to zero, uh, the ass assuming this data generating process. Uh, then we have uh, one for good being equal to one and bad being equal to zero. So that's the positive treatment condition and for the negative treatment condition. Okay, so uh, basically this is now the simulated outcome variables based on this data generating process and the covariates that we specified previously. And of course, uh, um, uh, taking into account our um, uh, our epsilon, which is the the uh, the error term uh, that we specified. Okay, so these are now the potential outcomes. Of course, uh, you know, given the fundamental problem of uh, causal inference, we're not observing all of those potential outcomes. But they, uh, you know, in the hypothetical scenario where we could observe them, we can use them to specify our uh, treatment effects of interest, right? And that's what we're. Uh, basically going to do now in this step. We're declaring the estimates, which are basically the quantities of, about the population that we're trying to make inferences about. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on uh, six different uh, estimates um, <clears throat> that we want to examine the power for. Uh, one, uh, the first two are basically just the average treatment effect of the positive and the negative treatment, which is just the difference, the average difference between uh, the uh, the treatment condition and the control condition uh, for the, the positive treatment and the negative treatment. We're doing this now here using the declare underscore estimand uh, command. Uh, I should always uh, emphasize that. So these are the basic average treatment effects, uh, essentially among uh, independence, the effect of the um, um, positive and negative frame uh, in the survey experiment. And then we have these four different uh, uh, um, interaction terms, 
uh, two of which, uh, the Democrat uh, bad interaction and the Republican good interaction, that's, uh, that's the indicator for this uh, uh, ceiling effect that we talked about. And uh, the main interest is here, of course, the two treatment effects between uh, how Republicans re respond to the negative framing and Democrats re re uh, respond to the positive framing. And the um, uh, idea here is, of course, that these would cancel out, they would disregard that information. And so uh, these are uh, therefore the, the estimates are therefore uh, the true gamma as well as uh, the negative value, uh, the negative true gamma for uh, Democrats, okay, given the data generating process and the setup that we have so far. Right? So uh, based on that, uh, if we add this to the design, we can also rather than draw data, we can now draw estimates and the estimates are now basically uh, given the data that we have and given the potential outcomes um, and the specification of the estimates that we want to uh, um, basically learn about, we can now create compute the true, you know, if the, if the fundamental problem of uh, causal inference didn't uh, exist and we could observe all potential outcomes, we can directly compute these average treatment effects as the differences between the actual potential outcomes for um, the, um, in, uh, for the uh, negative treatment, for the positive treatment, and for these respective interactions, okay? So these are actually based, so the two treat, average treatment effects are actually based on the differences between those potential outcomes, and these are actually based on the true gamma that we're, that we're, using, uh, that we're using in this scenario, okay? Um, the next step is to reveal the potential outcomes. And this is kind of the step where, uh, of course, in the real world, we don't observe all potential outcomes. We just observe realizations depending on the actual treatment assignment. Um, and so this step uh, basically uh, reveals the out of the potential outcomes that we kind of simulated now, uh, we will for each observation assign the uh, potential outcome that is kind of uh, appropriate for that actual treatment assignment and the actual uh, covariates um, um, that uh, that uh, um, that is realized okay so basically what we're going to do is we will uh, just uh, use the declare underscore reveal command uh, which will declare a uh, which will reveal the actual dependent variable y um, 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 <clears throat> and um, and basically based on uh, here we have include list good bad which is based on those potential outcomes for uh, the uh, the different treatment conditions okay and um, so essentially we what we're looking at is basically we have the potential outcomes for each observation um, and um, and uh, we know that you know for example the first observation here is in the control group uh, and is a Republican. Uh, so the predicted, uh, the, the realized potential outcome is of course the outcome that is in the control group. So that will be the revealed Y that we actually observe, right? Uh, another observation here, this is for example, someone in the positive treatment. Uh, so that means the potential outcome that is realized uh, is the one where uh, uh, good is equal to one. So that's this uh, potential outcome. So the, the value that is then added in the Y column is then that respective potential outcome for the specific treatment uh, assignment or treatment regime. Okay. Same here for people, uh, uh, respondent eight, who is in the negative treatment uh, or negative framing group, uh, so that the respective potential outcome is minus uh, eight, six, four. Uh, and so that's the outcome that is then realized. Okay. Then in the next step, now we have, basically we have the data generating process. We have our potential outcomes. We have the underlying estimates that we're trying to make inferences about, uh, assuming we, you know, the fundamental problem of causal inference didn't exist. Now we have a declared, uh, a, a revealed actual outcome that we observe given the data generating process. And now we're going to specify the estimator that we're using to learn something about the uh, potential outcomes and the estimates that we specified. Okay. And, um, uh, we can do this using the declare underscore estimator uh, command. Uh, so we're specifying a basic uh, linear regression uh, with these parameters that uh, we already looked at, the interaction terms between uh, 
partisanship as a pretreatment covariate and uh, the treatment assignment uh, positive and negative uh, framing of the handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we're using uh, robust uh, um, um, uh, basic OLS with uh, uh, heteroscedasticity, robust standard errors. Uh, and the terms that we're interested in are, of course, um, uh, the average treatment effects and these, these interactions. And ultimately, these are uh, then matched to the estimates that we specified previously, right? So each of those parameters uh, that we're estimating are then kind of matched to the um, estimates that we're interested in that we specified previously, right? And the, that comparison between our estimator, what we're getting out of the model, and the underlying estimates based on the, you know, true data generating process and the um, uh, you know, the unobserved potential outcomes, that will be the comparison that will then help us uh, kind of specify, for example, whether there's any bias uh, in our estimates, whether uh, and what statistical power looks like, uh, what, you know, type S, type M error looks like, and so on, okay? Um, so um, based on this, another uh, uh, useful uh, step here is at this step, after we specified the, the estimator, we can use the draw estimates command. Uh, and that basically uh, does the same um, kind of procedure that we did previously. We kind of simulate one hypothetical data set using this data generating process and then uh, use our estimator that we specified and then uh, um, draw estimates will basically provide you with an overview of what these estimates look like look like right so this is basically these are now the regression coefficients uh, for the specific terms that we wanted to extract uh, and we already attached uh, which of these estimates the specific regression coefficients should be matched to right the average treatment effect of bad and uh, good or the positive and negative frame uh, and the respect respective interaction terms okay um now, now this is basically um, uh, complete. Um, um, now we basically declare the entire design up to the point where we have the estimators, we have our estimates, and we can basically compare uh, what our estimator gives us to you know, the true underlying data generating process. Of course, what we want to do is we want to repeat this design declaration for varying values of gamma, right? So in the uh, illustration that I showed you now, I just set gamma as equal to zero, but <clears throat> The question ultimately that we started with that we wanted to answer was to what extent are we able to uh, recover or, or identify this uh, this motivated reasoning effect uh, for varying levels of or for varying effect sizes of this treatment right so depending on how effective this uh, effective this treatment might be in shifting attitudes uh, are we able to then recover uh, this uh, this this motivated reasoning to the extent to which democrats and republicans um, uh, disregard counter attitudinal evidence regarding the performance or the government's performance uh, in handling the COVID-19 pandemic, right? So how do we do this? Uh, one thing we have to do is we kind of have to uh, run all this code again. Uh, uh, just uh, instead of setting gamma equal to one, we set gamma equal to a parameter that we're going to kind of supply uh, in um, uh, multiple iterations, right? So we set gamma equal to gamma as a placeholder um, and we'll basically plug in different values for gamma uh, in a second. Um, and specifically, we're doing this using the redesign command. Uh, so we're sp basically, I'm specifying the entire design the way we did it here uh, uh, step by step. Um, I, I omitted the code for the remaining steps here. The only thing that I changed was adding this gamma. Uh, and then I take that design object <clears throat> and then use the redesign command to basically kind of repeat this design this whole procedure for varying levels of gamma this gamma is now ranging from 0.1 as i said to uh, uh to one uh, which is the maximum assumed effect size that i talked about previously and basically we go through the same procedure uh, all these steps that i mentioned previously with varying levels of gamma okay and that's what the redesign pack uh, the redesign command ultimately does right after we did this uh, we can again uh, uh, draw um, estimates for, um, uh, well, we could draw, uh, uh, we could also draw data sets uh, based on each of these designs. 
but essentially what is uh, what is more interesting is to draw the estimates for each of those designs and the way this basically looks uh, like is if we do this for the redesigns uh, uh, or the the designs object which basically consists now of um, a set of um, uh, 10 different uh, designs with varying levels of gamma gamma from point 0.1 to 1. Uh, we can now basically go through the entire procedure and compute these estimates uh, and as well as our estimators um, 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 and, uh, and basically s examine how uh, both our estimators change uh, and our estimates change and then how you know power and everything is is affected uh, uh, by uh, changing these parameters right rather than changing gamma we could also change the sample size here we could change other parameters we could change uh, factors related to uh, the sampling procedures and so on or the treatment assignment regime and so on right so they're basically a wide range of possible scenarios that you could explore and how they ultimately impact your your estimates okay um all right so now now we basically we're at the point where we have not only one setup of that design but we basically have uh 10 different or 10 different scenarios of the same design with varying levels of gamma and now what we're going to do is we're going to for each of those um for each of those 10 scenarios we're going to simulate 1000 data sets 1000 realizations of that that experiment look at the estimates look at the est uh, our actual estimator and compare uh basically uh, uh or examine the extent to which uh we're able to uh, in our case we're just focused on power uh we're able to reject uh, the null hypotheses uh, that you know each of these parameters are, is, is equal to zero based on um, the the estimator that we're actually using okay so um, all we have to do in order to do this is we have to use uh, the command simulate underscore designs uh, based on our designs which now again combines 10 different scenarios for varying levels of gamma uh, and each of those now will be simulated with 1000 uh, simulations okay um, and then after we uh, uh, did that we can look at our uh, simulations and we can uh, now we see this is a large large data frame um, 60,000 observations which basically uh, takes into account um, uh, a couple of different variables we have uh, different iterations we have basically six 60,000 because we have 10 different um, 10 different scenarios for each scenario, we have 1,000 simulations, and for each simulation, uh, we have six different um, parameters or six different estimates and estimators, right? So, uh, or estimates. Uh, so, for each of those scenarios and each simulation, so that's 10,000, we have one time uh, the average treatment effect for the negative uh, frame. The average treatment effect for the positive frame and four different uh, interaction terms so that's in total 60,000 um, um, uh, quantities essentially uh, for you know distributed uh, among uh, the scenarios or clustered by scenario by simulation um, um, and uh, the, the estimate uh, essentially okay um, so for each case, of course, we have the estimate that's again based on the true data generating process and the potential outcomes that we uh, that we kind of are in reality not observable, but in our simulation we we actually know what the, the what the potential outcomes are uh, would be and our estimate. And so uh, based on that comparison, we can you know as I said look at bias and so on. Right. Uh, so the next step is to prepare uh, this large data frame for plotting. And this is relatively straightforward. Uh, I'm just uh, creating a summary data frame uh, where I take the simulations that we created so far. Uh, I'm grouping them by uh, uh, by gamma and by estimate label. So uh, in other words, uh, by the scenario that we're looking at and the type of estimate that we're looking at. Um, and then I will uh, compute the power by looking at the average uh, p-value or the, the um, the average uh, uh, so p-value smaller or equal to 0 0.05 is basically uh, true for all p-value the variable is uh, of course not 
uh, included uh, in the output, but essentially one column in this data frame is the p-value for the specific estimator, uh, for the specific estimate uh, in that given scenario. Um, <clears throat> so we're basically just uh, checking whether this is equal to uh, smaller or equal than 0.05, uh, and then uh, computing the average, which means basically the proportion of times we're rejecting the null hypothesis uh, for that specific parameter, right? So that's ultimately, uh, that will be equal to the power uh, that we want to compute. We know the true um, uh, population effect is not equal to zero, so the null hypothesis uh, should be rejected. And so this tells us the proportion of times that the null hypothesis, the false null, is actually rejected. Okay, so that's the power. Um, uh, and we can also look at the uh, the average estimate as just the the if we wanted to look at bias, for example, we could we could use that. Um, then uh, I'm just uh, creating an additional uh, factor variable based on the estimate uh, underscore label. So that's the uh, uh, the um, uh, <clears throat> the indicator for the different estimates, uh, and I'm just uh, creating some uh, nicer labels for for the plot that we're going to. Uh, uh, that we're going to have on the next slide, right? So uh, this summary uh, is then, of course, a 60 by 5 uh, tibble uh, because we're combining now all 1,000 uh, 1, um, uh, simulations, right? So we're left with uh, 60 uh, for six different um, um, estimates uh, and 10 different scenarios. So that's 60 by 5, uh, uh, and we have our power and we have our uh, mean estimate, okay? Um, and the last step, step 11, uh, we plot our results. Uh, all we want to do, all we have to do is uh, uh, create a ggplot call with our summary uh, DF um, uh, data frame. Uh, our aesthetics are as follows. We have um, a gamma on the x-axis, uh, that's the varying uh, parameter that we looked at. We have our power on the y-axis. Uh, we're grouping this uh, by um, uh, by the label variable um, and assigning uh, different colors and different shapes uh, for the label. And then there's a bunch of other additional commands to make the pl plot a little bit more pretty. Uh, I, we, we talked about visualization before, so I don't, I'm not going to go through them uh, step by step. Um, um, but, uh, but essentially, um, we will look at a, a, a point, a line, uh, different points for each level of uh, gamma uh, connected with lines uh, um, and, uh, and uh, um, comparing each of those different estimates that we talked about. Uh, the easier way is probably to just uh, show you the graph. This is the output that we uh, get when we uh, execute this uh, command, uh, run this command. And um, <clears throat> what we see is now statistical power, as I said, on the y-axis. Uh, the, the, the kind of the level, the acceptable level of power that we kind of are looking for is uh, 0.8. Uh, we have on the x-axis uh, gamma. As I said, one was equal, was equivalent to uh, a hypothetical scenario where the treatment effect is just as large as the partisan differences between uh, independents and Democrats or independents and Republicans, right? So a, a, a quite substantial uh, large effect. Um, and then we have uh, kind of three different uh, clusters of estimates. On the one hand, we have the red and blue here. These are the average treatment effects of the uh, uh, positive and negative uh, frame. And as I mentioned, we're assuming that the positive and negative frames have uh, kind of symmetric effects. Uh, we could, of course, assume that they're varying in size, but essentially that would just, you know, shift uh, shift this uh, uh, line uh, to you know one side or the other, um, but um, the important the important point is how uh, for these varying levels of this uh, uh, the this this uh, treatment effect uh, power uh, of course decreases as our gamma uh, approaches zero, uh, and we can see uh, you know given given this framework that we set up. Uh, up to uh, down to a, a gamma of around 0.3, um, uh, we have a, a, a sufficient power of around 80 percent, uh, or uh, uh, just just under 80 percent, uh, to um, um, basically identify the treatment effect of the or the treatment the main treatment effect among independents essentially, right? So uh, if 
uh, the effect of the treatment, both the positive and the negative treatment, is uh, in size about 30% of the difference between independents and democrats or independents and republicans in terms of the evaluation of the um, government's handling of the coronavirus pandemic uh, then uh, we have sufficient power to identify those main treatment effects right uh, the next two parameters that we're looking at is the interaction between uh, negative um, uh, the negative frame and republicans uh, and uh, the positive frame and democrats to examine this motivated reasoning component and if we look at that, we see uh, we have sufficient power to identify or to recover that effect uh, for uh, effect sizes up to uh, about uh, gamma equals uh, 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 between 0.5 and 0.4. OK, uh, so, you know, around 0.45, um, 0.45. OK, so if the treatment effect is. If the effect of the treatment uh, basically shifts people's attitudes um about 50 percent of the difference between in in the evaluation of the administration between independents and democrats or independents and republicans uh then uh, we have uh, 80 percent power uh under that under those assumptions uh we have sufficient power to uh identify that effect so to speak right um uh, so that's that's also uh, sufficient for kind of a reasonable range of effect sizes. We will have enough statistical power to basically identify this motivated reasoning uh, uh, or a pattern, as well as the main uh, treatment effect um, uh, of this positive and negative uh, frame. Um, for uh, when it comes to the ceiling effects, uh, the so the kind of the cross interaction for democratic uh, respondents and uh, the negative frame and Republican respondents and the positive frame, uh, power is much lower uh, and uh, we would only be able to re to kind of recover these effects for very large treatment effects. But uh, on the uh, plus side from our perspective is that these ceiling effects are ultimately not the main interest of our analysis. So we're quite fine with not being able to recover these uh, interaction effects uh, uh, fully. Okay. Um, so um, that's that's all. That uh, was a lot of code and uh, a lot of uh, steps. We went through uh, eleven steps to set up this uh, design. But kind of um, once you uh, kind of go through each step, um, 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 uh, or go through these uh, commands step by step and see how they kind of build onto each other and kind of go through all these components of this the meta declaration of research designs it's fairly straightforward it takes a little bit of time to get used to uh, those commands but it's an imp Im incredibly powerful framework and it makes uh, design um, uh, calculations and power calculations and planning uh, experimental designs so much more so much easier and also so much it makes it so much uh, easier to also share your design with other researchers, uh, uh, communicate the uh, key components of your design and explore how changing specific components, for example, the you know treatment assignment, what is the effect of blocking versus not blocking and so on. There are countless numbers of design specifications where you can directly explore uh, the effect on your estimates, your estimate, uh, your your power, your bias, uh, and so on. Right. So it's an incredibly powerful tool, and I can only recommend you to um, uh, uh, to to start using it for your own research as well. Um, the last thing uh, I should say, I wanted to add a link. Uh, I'll add that later on. Uh, but there is a a, a great um, library of design. Uh, setups on uh, on the declare design website as well um, let me just google that real quick uh, if you go on declaredesign.com uh, let me move myself again a little bit um, uh, there's there's a, a ton of really good resources here as well you can uh, go through the um, uh, kind of the vignettes uh, to kind of go through the steps of um, uh, setting up your research design here as well. So uh, feel free to.
go through those uh, explanations as well. They're really uh, well documented. But the one key point that I wanted to uh, show you, make sure that you, you've seen it, is the design library that is really useful. Uh, for a lot of kind of standard designs, you can directly, you don't have to kind of go through every step individually and program it uh, in a declare design you know from scratch uh, but you can basically use these uh, pre uh, pre-designed uh, you know uh, standard uh, designs like a binary uh, a factor or factorial design multi-arm design and so on right so uh, they're usually vignettes explanations uh, there's code uh, so a lot of the designs that you might be thinking about, uh, you can already use those templates uh, and directly get started. Um, all right, uh, this is it uh, for this week. I'm really looking forward to our uh, Q&A session this week.